I've called games ambitious before, but please believe me when I say that Terra Invicta is one of the wildest, strangest, and biggest ideas I've ever seen a single developer take on. All at once, it's a grand strategy scale geopolitics simulator, an alien invasion battler, and a hard sci-fi solar system industrialization simulator with integrated, real-time, Newtonian physics-driven fleet combat. I got sucked into its world, but that fresh mix of ideas suffers from some very conventional strategy game failures in its interface, accessibility, and balance. One part of Terra Invicta is an engaging simulation of a world where secret coalitions fight in the shadows over humanity's response to the threat of an alien invasion, managing national allegiances, research, economies, espionage, and militaries. You take control of one of seven factions, each of which has its own unique asymmetric victory conditions, and command their leadership council to build a movement that can reach your goals in a fascinating, ever-shifting political dance. The other part is a detailed simulation of human expansion into the solar system, the likes of which I've never seen in a video game. It's complete with real-time space combat and years-long travel between solar bodies. Using a jaw-dropping array of near-future and science fiction texts, you're expected to figure out how to best build ships, colonies, and stations able to produce the space resources you need to win the fight. Either of these two games would be pretty fun on their own, and they both have interesting ideas alongside very cool, well-designed systems, but Terra Invicta's weakest links are the places these two halves come together. They're so different that you could easily love one and hate the other. And even if you love both ideas, like me, the whiplash of switching between them gets extreme. Combine that with an interface fighting to keep up with that complexity, and much of your early time with Terra Invicta is likely to be spent just trying to keep your head above water. I lost my first campaign of Terra Invicta after about 50 hours played, culminating in a death spiral I didn't realize I'd entered until it was about 10 hours too late to escape. My battle of resistance ended as alien factions on Earth crippled too many nations, while my efforts in space lost steam amid a confusion of weird mechanics and ship design woes. Public opinion remains unmoved. Death spirals are never fun, but it did reveal the clever nature of Terra Invicta's overall scenario where Earth's vast resources can allow you to meet your goals, if you're able to leverage them. Perhaps the coolest thing in Terra Invicta are the seven conspiratorial factions. Each one is nicely represented by an interesting key character, all of whom are well detailed by voiced dialogue whenever new research or major events pop off. Perfect. Every one of the factions has wildly different plans. When playing as the Resistance, you're trying to strengthen Earth to fight off the aliens, unite its people, and preserve the human way of life as much as possible. At the other extreme are the Servants, who think that aliens are divine beings and whose intentionally easier campaign has as you align with the alien cause. These ideological differences can lead to some interesting conflicts. In my campaign as the Resistance, I did things like form international coalitions to invade nations and overthrow governments friendly to the aliens. We've got the package. I forged alliances of convenience with groups like Project Exodus, who, while they were squandering resources on trying to escape alien conquest, at least weren't actively working for the bad guys. You do this with your faction's council, which you recruit from a broader pool of candidates with their own loyalties, backgrounds, and traits. I had one counselor who was a paranoid cynic, and while that made her an excellent spy and counterspy, it also made her hard to trust with valuable assets. One of my favorites was an Argentine military colonel who led my, uh, deniable operations. It's hard for enemy factions to gain support when their agents go missing. All this geopoliticking and fighting takes place on a detailed and fairly robust simulation of Earth. The overview screen tracks things like global opinion about each faction and the economies of nations, but also details like the level of human-caused climate change. Terra Invicta clearly wants to simulate every aspect of our world, at least at the macro level. For example, research involves both public projects every faction contributes to that show the bigger arc of what humanity is working towards, as well as private projects that benefit your faction alone. You have to split research output between them, as does everyone else. With all of that intricate detail, it seems very strange when the simulation leaves out obvious cascading effects. 
For instance, the economies of individual countries are tracked by GDP, wealth disparity, and productive capacity, but at the same time, countries are individual units to such a degree that apocalyptic economic events in one country don't appear to affect their neighbors at all. But for the most part, that simulation is incredibly cool. It's just also overwhelming. The struggle to track what's relevant and interesting to your cause is difficult, and the interface heroically tries to surface relevant information, but struggles to do so in a useful way. The biggest detail Terra Invicta ignores, though, is storytelling about the aliens themselves. For much of the early campaign, it feels like they may as well not exist, which is fun during those early X-Files-esque conspiracy years. But by the time I'm being told they're doing terror attacks on civilian populations, I'd at least hope to have seen more than a single piece of grainy art depicting one. Once you get to space, however, much of what's going on is painted in the purple of the alien conquerors. But again, it's just a wholly different video game from the surface. Space is about strategically beating others to the resources you need, taking hold of them, and never letting go. That fight starts on Earth, as you need its resources to get your first stations and colonies going. But later, your space efforts become self-sustaining. As part of those efforts, you'll build fleets of ships, and can eventually use those to fight against alien ships, though doing so risks severe repercussions as alien fleets move to destroy your space assets in retaliation. Space combat is grounded in hard sci-fi, and it's as much about weapons and preparation before the fights as it is about actual choices made during them. You worry about the specific thrust of engines versus how much Delta V a craft can muster, and how that affects it both in and out of fights. In real-time combat, precisely tweaking maneuver nodes to get specific results can be rough, and the interface here is both slippery and frustrating. I gave up on complex kinetic and energy weapons tactics based on maneuvers by my second fight, when I realized that while you can build space warships early on, it's basically a huge waste of your time. I resorted to overwhelming the enemy with missiles, and that worked pretty well. Later, I tried to build some big, giant, awesome space battleships. Spoilers, my Micross fantasies were bad. It went apocalyptically wrong. I could never figure out why, and Terra Invicta wasn't interested in teaching me. Perhaps more frustrating is how the other layers of the game, down on Earth, can intrude into this one. Enemy factions will seize control of your stations, seemingly at random. Those kinds of political maneuvers make sense on the Earth layer, where huge numbers of people are at play, but in space? Why are we letting strangers onto our secretive space weapons research facility? And why aren't all our marines doing anything about it? Oh, and don't you dare blow up any non-alien space facilities. No matter how evil their occupants, everyone will hate you for it. There are brilliant ideas in the ambitious Terra Invicta, and a lot of fun to find for strategy game enthusiasts, but you need to be willing to drill down into sometimes opaque and confusing mechanics to do it. The politics of its Earth layer are fun, if overwhelming, while the space layer is very cool on paper, but the two just don't gel in practice. When playing takes such a huge time investment of trial and error to see results, my overall recommendation has to come with big caveats until Terra Invicta has spent some more time in early access. <laughs>